I saw a video where they said Ben Hinn was repenting. Before he repented, they said, oh, he doesn't repent. I read the scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, these are the words of our master, not our mentor. These are the words of the master Jesus. Give and it shall be given to you. And of course, you heard that statement where they've said, you know, uh, you shouldn't give looking for nothing back. <clears throat> Jesus didn't teach that. He says, give and it shall be given to you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And for uh, this kind of attack against what they call within a degrading way, the prosperity gospel. I, I, don't, I don't like that term, that you shouldn't ask nobody to give a thousand dollars. See, it's wrong. Benny Hinn, that's a lie, that's, that's false. God asked me to give it. He asked me to give a certain amount, and I got a miracle. If any man preach any other gospel, even if it's an angel, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Is it in the Bible? That's what the Bible says. If they preach any other gospel, let them be accursed. And you can normally see them when they attack other preachers. Mm. And yet in the same region like Nigeria, there is not one, one person challenging Islam. Because they are afraid that their heads will be on a chopping block. Oh. Mm. So they are afraid to confront Islam. Mm. But they can confront another preacher. Yet their own Bible says, who are you to oppose another man's servant? Mm. Before his master, he stands or he falls. Shut up when the Bible is talking. You have no right to talk about another preacher. Zero. Talk about the Muslims. They, they are killing Christians. Talk about them. Talk about Islam. Talk about Hinduism. Mm. Why? Why are you not challenging them for killing Christians? Mm. Afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid for their lives. Mm. Yeah. Because they want to keep their lives. Romans 14 verse number 4. Who art thou to judge another man's servant? Before his master, he stands or falls. Yea, he shall be holding up. For God is able to make him stand. Mm. Notice, the solution is there. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he said, even if he is going to fall, mm. God will hold him up. Mm. And you will stand again. Huh. And here you are, you have already condemned him. Hai, yaligo stevre tu skaate. I saw, I saw a video where they said Ben Hinn was repenting. I said, wow. Amazing. Before he repented, they said, oh, he doesn't repent. When he repented, they said, it's not genuine. Oh. Are you junior God? <laughs> Assistant God. Deputy Jesus. Mm, Deputy Jesus. <laughs> you know the heart of Ben Hinn. You know it. Mm. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you can't even recognize the Holy Ghost if he moves down your street with a red dot on. Wearing a red dot on, you will not notice if this is the Holy Ghost. But you know, when he lied, he's not sincere. That's what you think. Come on, get off your high horse, concentrate on your church. Look at the numbers you have 250. I'm not worried whether Ben Hinn's repentance is genuine. He is not repenting to me. Mm -hmm. mm. He's just on a video saying something. Maybe he's already been with God behind the scenes. Mm. Spoken to God. Talked to God two years ago mm. or a year ago. He's just coming on video to say it. Mm. And here you are commenting on it. Mm. How many members do you have in your church? 300. Wow. Don't you think maybe you're spending too much time analyzing Ben Hinn? Than your real calling to win souls. Here we are. I lose the encrevisus que velas. I got to a point where I said, God, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not talking about any other man of God. Yes, I'm just dealing with, I'm defending Christians, but never attacking people. Yes, sir. Mm, never. Sir. Why? I'm not junior God. I read the scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, these are the words of our master, not our mentor. These are the words of the master Jesus. Give and it shall be given to you. And of course you've heard that statement where they've said, you know, uh, you shouldn't give looking for nothing back. <laughs> Jesus didn't teach that. He says, give and it shall be given to you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And for uh, this kind of attack against what they call within a degrading way, the prosperity gospel. I, I, don't, I don't like that term, that you shouldn't ask nobody to give a thousand dollars. See, it's wrong. Benny Hinn, that's a lie. That's, that's false. God asked me to give it. He asked me to give a certain amount. 
and I got a miracle. Solomon, you read the book of Kings, it says he sacrificed a thousand bullocks. He gave a thousand dollar seed to God. And the Bible says God came to him in a dream and said, ask me whatever you want. That statement about a thousand dollar seed is false. That part of it is all wrong. It's not scripture, scriptural. A thousand dollar seed is a significant divine seed from God. It's the Roman Catholic Church who, um, I'm not saying there are no good people there, but that, that doctrine they have about the vow of poverty and that they try to uh, enforce that on the, on the Protestant church. And part of this attack uh, that has come against the Protestant church is from the Catholic church that they feel that preachers shouldn't prosper. They feel that the people of God shouldn't prosper. Let me tell you something, that's demonic. That's demonic doctrine. You cannot find that anywhere in Christ's teachings. It looks right, but it's demonic. This is what the Lord said to me. He says, Satan's plan is to attack the finances because if he attacked the finances, he can slow down the kingdom progression. Satan is trying to stop the kingdom of God through the finances. Because if he got off with money, that's one thing with him. But you don't get and make over and make a blanket statement attacking Mike Murdoch's message on the thousand dollar seed. That was disrespectful. These fathers have laid a foundation for us to do the work of God and for God to establish his covenant and kingdom in the earth. That was disrespectful. You don't do that. I don't care who you are. And, and my thing is, I hope Pastor Benny isn't doing this because he's trying to get ahead of it, but you're hurting the body of Christ. And my message to you along with other leaders, because I'm coming to you and I'm speaking on behalf of the kingdom of God from the face of Jesus personally, not from just the whole body of Christ of leaders. My rank is way more higher than that. I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ face to face now. All I want you to do, I understand your personal conviction, Pastor Benny, and your, uh, uh, your repentance in that area. All I want you to do is you need to get back on social media and you need to straighten that out. You need to teach the word of God about giving. You need to straighten that out and we'll be okay. We'll be all, we'll be all right. But if you don't, then all of the money when, that you preached, you preached about seed faith. All those years, the hundreds of millions you got, you owe the body of Christ a refund. You owe them to give them all their money back. If, if you can't do this, don't hurt our generation. The generations behind you, the generations coming behind me, because our fathers, like Oral Roberts, laid a foundation of sea faith so that we could do the gospel. So that the gospel could be funded all over the world. And for you to do that, it was disrespectful. You did not make a balance. If that was a personal repentance, you didn't have a right to get publicly. You have just caused an occasion for all of God's enemies to blaspheme. You've given the world exactly what they want to hear. And I want to give another rebuke to that statement you made about thousand dollar giving. A thousand dollar gift is in the Bible. It's in the Bible, my friend. It's in the Bible. The thousand dollar seed is right. Thank you, Mike Murdoch, for preaching that message. First of all, I say thank you, Jesus, for giving me the revelation of the thousand dollar seed and using Mike Murdoch to confirm that. Don't let the enemy, body of Christ, pastors, don't. This is the time to teach on seed faith more than ever to destroy this thing that, that they've started, this, this attack from Satan. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not attacking Benny or, or even inside of this. Law. I know where this is coming from. It's the devil that wants to stop the kingdom. We must not let that happen. We will not let that happen. And we will not let a bunch of homosexuals run the church. It ain't happening. Please watch this video where Pastor David Tyro drag his members over Paul giving. I'll be back. Thank you. How do you can give more than what you've been giving? And so if we had 500 people give $10,000, if we have 500 people give $10,000, we can raise the million in one day. Lord, I also break a stingy spirit because I sense that there's some heavy hitters watching me tonight. There's some people that can give 200,000, 300,000. They can give 50,000, 20,000. They had it saved up. But God, that's a stingy spirit. And there's a spirit of fear. So I break that spirit of stinginess. Some of you are just giving maybe a little money, $10 here, 20 when you know you have thousands of dollars. Don't be like that. Come on, tell me what you can give. You have money put away. You have money in accounts that you know you are sitting on. And it's not right 
that you come into a ministry like this and get the presence of God and the glory of God, and it is hard for God to get your natural things. You should be willing to give when you have finances. You have finances that you have to give, but you're holding it up. You will have it saved. You have it put away somewhere. God wants you to sow that right now. You have large amounts that you have in savings or annuities, or you probably have to go in a CD and break it, but God has given it to you. You need to sow it tonight. You got money in your bank accounts. You got money in your annuities. You got money in your stocks. You got money in gold, in silver. You got money somewhere. We need to take care of this now, quickly. Come on, I want those who can give. You need to do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now, quickly. Selfishness is when everything aggravates towards you. It's all about you. And that's how the devil works. The very opposite of selfishness is the love of God. Where others are preferred before you. And this is where I have issue with people who preach this so-called American dream. Which they call the prosperity gospel. I trace that prosperity gospel historically. The founder of that prosperity gospel, the mover and shaker of it, is Simon Magus. In Acts chapter 8 verse 20, look at it. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Why? Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. He saw the power of God and he brought money to tap. He was sowing a seed for God's power. And Peter said, you perish with your money. That that means the prosperity gospel is not apostolic it's not apostolic teaching for the church where you're told that to get something from god something must come from you historically simon the sorcerer is the founder of that that belief system and because it is recorded in, in history that the people who are following that doctrine who believed in his doctrine they infiltrated the religious group and that is how it came into the christian circle is that bishop benson in the house i was listening to who said that in america american preachers brought hollywood stars to teach them the arts of getting money out of people. He said they got Hollywood stars to train them on how to get money out of people. Not the word of God. That's the evil of that prosperity gospel. And that prosperity gospel is selfish. Because the only person that benefits is the preacher. Because you have to keep giving to him so that you will be getting blessed. And if you don't see the blessing, he tells you it's because your cloud is not full. So it's like a mirage. You are given to prosper, but you never see the prosperity. A few people will say, but I have prospered by giving. No, you didn't prosper by giving. You prospered by the grace of God. If it is by giving, everybody is giving. Everybody should prosper. God doesn't have double standards. The Bible didn't teach us that. The Bible taught us to esteem others. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Interestingly, this verse has also been twisted. The word grace is the word charis. Charis means to give freely. What is his grace? His grace is that he was rich. For your sake, he became poor. That's the grace of Jesus. He deprived himself to enrich you. So if I actually have the grace of prosperity, I should deprive myself and give to you. But they twist it that because I have the grace of prosperity, you that don't have the grace, deprive yourself of your little and give to me so that my grace will work for you. That's a, a twisting. That's an insult to the scriptures. The grace of Jesus is that though he was rich, now for your sake he became poor that you may be rich. He, he deprived himself to enrich you. So real grace is that the preacher who says he has prosperity as grace, he should come to church with money and distribute to everybody so that members can benefit from his grace of prosperity. Not that members should empty everything, sell everything and bring to him. No, that's not Bible. You don't need to pay God to get anything from God. We give in church because we are responsible sons of God. And we know that God has a mission on earth to reach everybody. So we give so that God's mission can be carried out. We give so that our pastor who ministers and labors over us can be honored in our giving. We give so that the needs of saints can be met. That's why we give. It's not for any increase. All these titans that are making noise all over Nigeria. If titan really works, the richest country in the world 
should be Nigeria. If Titan really works like that, the richest country in the world should be Nigeria. But Nigerians are running to, to China where they don't know God. They are running to Saudi Arabia where they don't know Christ. They are running to nations that don't know Christ, but the nations are prospering and nobody there is paying tithe. But we are paying tithe religiously and yet we don't have roads. I can't travel to Calabar freely. God has no double standard too. He says what he means, he means what he says. If the pathway to prosperity is given, the richest nation on earth should be Nigeria. Nigerians are the best givers on earth. I'm telling you something because I, I know what goes on all over the world. A lot of American preachers can pay anything to preach in Nigeria. A lot of them because they know that in this nation, once you just show them scripture, whether it is clear or not, and it is connected to God, people will give. But that day is over. That day is over. Not with men like me that have been equipped with sound knowledge. That day is over. We are raising spiritual sons and daughters across the board who will defend the truth of the gospel. Our God is not a merchandiser. Our God is not an entrepreneur. Our God is a loving father. Who, who gives us all things freely to enjoy. Who has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What a father! What a father! What a father! Yes, so what a father! What a father! Thank you so much, Dr. Ebed Amina, for this. The message is clear for those that want to learn. Shalom, child of God. Welcome back, my people. New subscribers, thank you so much for joining me. Returning once, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. My people, you guys have watched the video. This is Prophet Obad Angel. Prophet Oba Angel said no to those that are dragging Pastor Benihin. Pastor Benihin repented, problem. If he did not repent, problem. When he has not repented, problem. People, those that said no to prosperity gospel were dragging him. When the man repents, now look at a pastor, Pastor David Terrell, angrily speaking with heavy anger. Demanding restitution from him. Not only restitution, no. His own is not only he's not demanding only restitution. He's not demanding for burning him to refund all that he collected through prosperity gospel. Rather, he's also act demanding that burning him not supposed to put that word "I'm sorry" over prosperity gospel because he's assigned by God. Because it's a gospel from above. Because it's biblical according to him. <clears throat> Child of God, there is nothing like prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel is from Satan. There's nothing like that. Okay? Bible did not say that Jesus came that men may be rich. And then gave them prosperity gospel that they may extort money from people. No. Bible did not recollect that Jesus called his disciples and, and made them disciples of collecting money. No. When he called Apostle Peter, Bible says, he says, Come, I will make you fishers of men. And not fishers of money. And not fishers of money. He normally tell them, Come, I will make you fishers of men. Drop this your fishing business. I want to make you fisher of men. I want you to start fishing men to my kingdom. I want you to drop your old man. I want you to drop this thing you are doing. Change of duty. But our pastors, they have turned this thing into, come, I will make you fisher of money through men. I will make you fisher of money. Christ did not call anybody to fish money for him. I will understand. Apostle, we need money. Ministry need money. But that shouldn't make a pastor to boldly say that prosperity gospel, which we know that comes from Satan in Matthew chapter 4, is from God. That is satanic. For me, it's satanic. He don't do that. And look at somebody that repented. Problem. You guys say, why did he repent? Hello? Why must he repent? Repent from what? That uh, uh, whatever gospel is, is not satanic. Hello, sir. See how you twist this scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Can you see how you twist the scripture? You twisted it to suit your pocket. Yes, 
Bible says, it says, give, and it will be given unto you. This is New King James. I'm ready for New King James Version. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Child of God, let's look into it. Some, some version of the scripture says, men give unto you. Men are not God. Okay? Now, listen. He said, give and to be given unto you. It did not say, give to God or give to pastor and it shall be given unto you. No. He said, give. He did not ask you to give. And you will give so, so amount of money as you normally do, Pastor David. There are places in the Bible, the scripture did not ask you to give $1,000 and God will multiply it and make you overnight billionaire. Give could be, he's talking about giving, willingly giving. You should give willingly. That is just what that scripture is, is trying to tell us. You should give willingly, just like what Apostle Paul says. The same thing with Apostle Paul's uh, message in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. You should give willingly, expecting nothing in return. Give, and it shall be given unto you. The giving there, the return of that giving you are giving is what? Well done, my faithful servant. That is what you are expecting from God. Well done, my faithful servant. Your giving on earth, giving, supporting pastors, supporting ministers of God, supporting ministry, that you, are, you have to do it willingly. And you should not expect something in return because God is not selling anything. God is not tra being traded by butter. Give me money. I will give you this. Okay? So that is what that place is actually trying to tell us, child of God. You are to give willingly. Of course, God bless you when you see your good heart. When you are willingly giving to the poor, giving to the needies, giving, supporting ministers of God, supporting ministry, supporting church, God will, only, will, will look at that your good heart and bless you. And not because of your giving. He will show you mercy by connecting you to men. Connecting you all sorts of things for them to bless you. Your business will be booming. All those things are the blessings of God because of your good heart. Because God has seen your good heart. That if I bless this man more, he will also support more. That many, the poor, the poor are, are waiting for his rising. I have seen his good heart. I have seen his... God will not make a way for, for you. That scripture that says, the, the, the work of your hand shall be blessed. That, that scripture will not find fulfillment in your life. The work of your hand shall be blessed. It's a covenant. The work of... You are doing nothing and pastor says you should bring millions of, millions of dollars. You will multiply. God is not doing trade by butter. And God is not doing money. He's not doing into money exchange. Okay, so that is not what Bible is telling us today. Of course, God will show you mercy when He sees your good heart. When you see that you have good heart, you are good at giving. He will make a way for you when there is no way by connecting you to men. He will use men to bless you. That men will come for your reason. He will show you mercy. That scripture will not find fulfillment in your life. That said that the work of your hand shall be blessed, and you must be doing something, and your giving should be willingly. But look at the one of prosperity preacher. The prosperity preacher's own is, yeah, God, they even lie. They, they will even use God to lie. They don't have conscience. They have to add God in, this, in the code. And God says that you have to drop $10,000. That he will bless you. If you have not watched the video where prophet, prophetess, uh, Joel, Joel Enter, Joel Enter Bayern. I posted the video yesterday. If you're on YouTube, can you check our live stream? Or I will put the link here. Where Pastor Apostle Genogens dragged them, dragged these American pastors. He asked Africans to beware of them. They are they are thieves. Even this one also Ado. He called, he mentioned them. Many a lot of them. He mentioned many of mentioned them, called them by names, he even added by him there. And you know, you guys should stop this now. He added by him there. They should stop. He said Africans should be aware of these people. They are not pastors. They are American thieves. That they normally go to Africans to extort money from them. In the name of give so that God will give you. 
Now, if you don't give and God that God did not give you, to not be as it looks as if that God is, is lying. If it's working, sir, why is the one they gave last year? Why didn't he work for them? The one they gave two years ago, why didn't he work for them? The one they gave yesterday, why didn't he work for them? The only person that normally has uh, benefit from this year manipulation, you guys manipulation, is the preacher. Because he's the collector. Why you are the giver? Because that you're giving is not from God. That you're giving is not for God. God is not aware of it. God is angry with, with it. That is why you're not getting blessed. Until you rise up and start giving willingly, expecting nothing in return. A cheerful giver, child of God, and not a giver that pastor manipulates, and not a giver that pastor uh, that give out of extortion. People can still do anything and bring the money, no problem. As long as you give me this money, no problem. God will change everything and make you pure. Hello, child of God, we must serve God and not man. Any child that is pointing you to himself is a prosperity gospel preacher, which is satanic and evil, because they normally make it to look like, eh, I am solution to your problem. Once you give me this money, you are covered. Once you give me this money, your problem is solved. It's wrong. And the same you, sir, this Pastor David, Pastor David, hello, look at, he said his members, they should not be stingy. They should give. He's the same person that says once time ago, if I don't watch the video, I'll put a link on the description. He said that he, he should have to worship him. That the members should worship him. That they must give. If he see the heavy anger, he was even talking to them, telling them that they have to give. He must give that money. That money, you have to release it. And the other one said they have to worship him. Hello, sir. I don't just get this gospel. I don't get the version of gospel, or version of Christianity, people like you are showing us in this generation. Look at a prophet about angel. Sir, with all due respect, instead of you to focus on the people that say no, that are dragging Benihim, which is what? Americans. Americans are dragging him heavily. Mike, Wingers, and others that are exposing him and dragging him, he now carry the anger to Nigerians. He said they are not, uh, they, are, they are not, they can't even speak against Muslims. Of course that one is true. I don't think uh, that I have seen Nigerians that are dragging him. I only see Nigerians that are saying, God, he repented, and the others. I have not, the Nigerians that I have seen, they are only dragging Dr. Ebed Amina. They say he should do restitution and not burn him. I've never seen any Nigeria that demand restitution from Pastor Benihim. This is the first pastor that I have known, I have seen. If you have seen, please can you put it on the comment section? Okay? It's only this is the only pastor that I've seen. Nigerians are only some Nigerians are just dragging him. Hey, now you are you are repent. Don't go back again. Because this is your third time of confessing. Confess you go back again, which is true. Many are demanding restriction from Pastor Dr. Ebed Amina and not burning him. Many Nigerians, Nigerian pastors. If you have not watched the video, I'll put it on the description. If you're on YouTube, okay? I'll put the link on the description so that you can watch the video. So, sir, I don't know whether you have any special issue with Nigerians. I don't know. But I think you should take it easy, sir. With all due respect, I like what you did. That is why I, 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 I normally appreciate people like you. The normal stand out and say no to evil, irrespective of who is involved. Okay? Not minding what the person will gain or what he will lose. You coming out now to rebuke something like this, I think it makes sense. Because I, I believe that maybe one day, I believe that pa this pastor will see it. And he will be angry with you. Because that is what they used to do. If he corrects that kind of error, the pastor will be angry. Which is wrong. But... I don't know whether he will be angry with you because he did not, he did not focus on Americans. You carry the thing now to Nigerians, which is wrong. God will help us. Now, in child of God, there's nothing like restitution in the Bible. It's not. Although some people say uh, restitution is good. It's good to restitute if you can. It's willingly. It's not by force. If you can restitute, it's okay. If you can't, it's okay. We're happy now. Our happiness is that he repented. Our praise should not go back again to the old man. 
A man said no to wickedness. He said no to extortion. He said no to, to manipulation. That he don't want to collect extort money from people again. And you are dragging him. I don't get it too. Honestly, I don't get it. I don't get it. So you should not repent. You should continue accepting money from people. So two thousand seed, two thousand dollars, and get a uh, five billion dollars. The person will sow and will not get. See, child of God, our reward is eternal. There's nothing like give so that God will give you. It's fraud. You don't do that. Prosperity gospel is full of wickedness. Prosperity gospel is full of scam. Prosperity gospel is selling God. Is selling God. If you are if you are a pastor and you believe in prosperity gospel, sir, with all due respect, you are merchandising Jesus. You are selling your master because our gospel is not for sale. Apostle Peter did not say the one that was given to him. Apostle Paul did not say his own. Neither Matthew say his own. Luke did not say his own. All the disciples of Jesus did not say their own. Why are you selling the gospel? Why are you selling the one that is given to you? Free you receive and free you shall give. The gospel of Jesus is not for sale. The gospel of my master is not for sale. It's not, I'm not here to tell you not to give. Of course it's good to give. Okay, It's good to support ministers, support ministry. Gospel is not free. Okay, Salvation is free, but gospel is not free. You need money to buy mic. You need money to buy chair. Church need money for church house, build house, and others. The pastor, you have to take care of him. Of course it is. It's very important. How can you do that without money? You see? So you need money. We are, but we are to give willingly. As Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. He said we should give willingly, expecting nothing in return. Our reward is eternal. Which is what? Well done, my faithful servant. So please stop dragging by him. In Luke, in book of Luke chapter 19, where Lazarus repented, it was Lazarus that said to Jesus, he said, Zacchaeus rather, Zacchaeus said to Jesus, I will refund all that I collected from people. The one that I stole from, I will refund them in double fold. Jesus did not ask him to do that. He did it willingly. If you knock somebody by force, how will you restore that? If restitution is by is must in the kingdom of God, how will you restore somebody that you knock by force? Will you restore the body again? How will you restore somebody that there are some things that cannot be restitution? It's not possible. So because of that, restitution is not must. It's, it's good to restitute if he can. But if he can't, it's okay. Okay? So you must not be taxing people, making it you are not making people not to repent again. Because you are comfortable with it. You are comfortable with manipulation. You are comfortable with extortion. You are comfortable. You don't want anybody to lose it, remove it from you. Or to target evil. Or to target a satanic. Or to target scam. You don't want anybody to target like that. That is why you came out with this kind of heavy anger, sir. Pastor David, with all due respect, please, I'm not here to defend your character, sir. This video is under fair use. So credit to the source. But I think you should calm down, sir. Be calming down. I think you need to, you need to look into your action. Look into your ministry and also repent like him. I appreciate what Pastor Benningham did. And I love him. Yes, I do. There's no amount of dragging. You guys will drag Benningham that will make me to change my mind. I love what he did. I thank God that he repented. This is a man that wants to make it right with God. This, in fact, they're even cooking all sorts of stories now. Some will come up with one story. Uh, Pastor Benningham did this. Pastor Benningham did this. Yes, he did it. He confessed and that settles it. That settles it. He lied. Yes, he lied. He did not. He didn't. Did he say he did not lie? A man confessed. Even that I even lied. I lied. Who would do that? If that man is not, is not willing to meet his master. If that man is did not confess from his heart, he can only say, "I'm sorry. I don't want to go back to." To prosperity gospel again, as I did the other time. I don't want to continue again. I'm sorry. He can only say that, but he did not. He now added that he lied. I even lied. Hello, who would do? Look at Benihim now, a man, seventy uh, years old man, a man that has carried this mic for fifty good years. 
According to him, he has been in the journey of serving God for 50 years. At least we're supposed to appreciate that. He came out and said that. He came out. He came out. The whole world and told the whole world that he lied. Hello, are you this God? He can even do that in secret. God, please, I'm sorry. But he decided to come out like this. And you guys are still dragging him. Instead of you to appreciate God for that. See, child of God, I love him. Yes, so, Pastor Benahim, if you are listening to me, I love you, sir. With all my heart, thank you for this, for this apology. Thank you for confessing. Thank you for what you did. It shows, for me, it shows me uh, humility. It shows a, a man that has conscience. It shows a man that has uh, pure, in, that is pure in heart. Whether they say, eh, they expose you this or that. Sir, I love you like that. Yes, yeah, so, even if they do not expose you, you just come out and confess, I love you like that. Even if they expose you, you don't change your mind and come and confess, Sir, I love you like that. Yes, yeah, so, I love you. I love what you did and I love you. From my heart, oh, I love you. I thank, okay, Pastor, Prophet Hubert Angel. He had forgotten that Prophet, Prophet Joel Ogebe came out, even Dr. Ebed Amina, they came out and, and appreciate him for what he did. And you say Nigerians are there. I don't know why you even add this Nigerian here. If you're not watching the one of Pastor uh, Prophet Joel Ogebe and Dr. Ebed Amina, that stood and said no, that people should stop dragging Benihim. That he has confessed and they like it. They thank God for what he did. If you're not watching the video, if you're on YouTube, I'll put the link on the description. Okay? So thank you guys for listening. We love you guys. Bye.